Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Made Simple podcast. I'm your host Matthew Macario and this is the podcast where you get chemistry confident and we take you from point A to grade A. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. It's great to have you back here again. I hope you're well. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about mass spectrometry and how it's used in analysis in organic chemistry. Now, we have talked about mass spectroscopy before. We talked about that at a much simpler level, where we were primarily using mass spectrometry to determine the mass and relative abundance of isotopes of elements. In this episode, we're going to be talking about using mass spectrometry to analyse, to find information about organic molecules, not just individual atoms. So we're going to talk a little bit about fragmentation of molecules. We'll talk a bit about the molecular ion and how we can use that. We'll talk about GCMS, which is an advanced analytical technique that uses mass spectrometry. And we'll talk a little bit about how mass spectrometry gets used in the real world too. Okay, and quickly a recap that when a sample is initiated into a mass spectrometer, the first process in the instrument is to ionize the sample. And when the sample happens to be a molecule, that's no different. What will happen is the electron gun will remove an electron from the sample. And so there is an ion that is the entire organic molecule less one electron. So it's a one plus ion of the molecule, the molecular ion. But other things also happen at this stage. When the electron gun is used, it's not necessarily that discrete. And that's useful because what it does is it can break bonds within organic compounds. And that means we get fragments because we fragment the molecule. And the fragments of the molecule that we get will also be charged. They'll also be ions. So we'll be able to detect them when they've passed through the instrument to the detector and we'll get useful information. Why is that useful? Because each molecule is going to have a few common fragments. Particular bonds are far more likely to, to break than others. And therefore, there is going to be common fragments that we see in spectra. And the exact fragments we get and the ratios of those fragments are going to be useful. When we get the spectra at the end, what we'll get is a series of peaks that tell us the mass over charge ratio and an indication of the relative abundance of those fragments. And we'll be able to get some information from that. Firstly, the peak that has the highest mass is going to be that molecular ion. So the mass indicated by that peak will be the relative molecular mass of that compound, the sample. Then we can look at the other peaks and use the abundance and masses of those fragments that are indicated as a fingerprint to compare digital library or to compare to a reference sample in order to help us identify what compound this is. If we get a match in our digital library, that is an indicator that our sample is likely whatever the sample of that match was. If we get a good match with our reference sample, that is also a good indication that our sample is the same as the reference sample. So that can be used for quality control as well. If we're trying to match against a digital library, then our use is more likely to be identifying an unknown sample. And that can be really useful too. In fact, that's one of the most common uses in the real world. We use mass spectrometry as a forensic device. We can use it to identify pollutants in water supplies, for example. There's also a powerful tool called GCMS. That's a technique that combines gas chromatography and mass spectrometry. The gas chromatography part is a method of separating out the various compounds within a sample. And once separated, the various compounds within the sample can be analysed using mass spectrometry. And this is all done in one instrument called a GCMS. Now this has a lot of uses and one of them is to identify the presence of particular drugs in biological samples. And so it's ideal for sports bodies to identify the presence of forbidden or restricted substances and drugs within the biological samples from athletes. This is the primary technique that gets used to identify those athletes who've been using performance enhancing substances and provides the evidence that is used in order to disqualify those athletes who are caught. 
Finally, we're going to make a brief mention of high resolution mass spectrometry. So while it's possible to use mass spectrometry to find the masses of isotopes, the masses of molecular fragments, to just one decimal place, for example, modern high resolution mass spectrometry enables the determination of atomic and molecular masses to three or four decimal places. And when that level of resolution is available, it enables being able to positively distinguish between various fragments or molecules that have very, very similar masses. Okay, so let's quickly summarise what we've talked about today. We talked about mass spectrometry being available for use for analysing organic molecules, not just isotopes of elements. We said that when that happens, the molecule in the sample will be fragmented, so various fragment ions will be produced. The spectra will contain the molecular ion, which tells us the molecular mass of our sample, and also the spectra shows us the, the mass and relative abundance of the fragments present. And we can use that information to positively identify samples. We can use this to identify unknown samples, for example, to identify what pollutants might be in water, or we can use this for quality control. We talked about using mass spectrometry in conjunction with gas chromatography, and that powerful technique GCMS can be used for all sorts of forensic uses, including the identification of the use of forbidden substances by athletes. And we also mentioned that there is high resolution mass spectrometry, which can be used to identify the mass of ions to three or four decimal places. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please tell a friend. If you have any further questions on this topic, please do pop into our Patreon community and ask those questions. There's a link in the episode description, or you can just go to patreon.com slash chemistry made simple. And I really look forward to hearing from you and to be able to answer any additional questions you've got. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you found it useful. And if you have had value from it, do consider visiting our Patreon community at patreon.com slash chemistry made simple, where you'll be able to ask deeper questions about this topic and get more support for your studies too. So I look forward to speaking to you again in the next episode. And until then, do look after yourself and goodbye.